Hi, in this video we are going to talk about the irreversible reactions in series. So this again involves multiple elementary reactions but now they are in series. Let us consider uh, the simplest case. Let us say we have the following reactions in series. A gives R gives S and their rate constants are K1 and K2 respectively. The type of these reactions I have considered are first order unimolecular type reactions. Okay. Now here to study the kinetics uh, for integral analysis, first we will write down the rate equations. So, if you write the rate of R A, so here I am writing the rate of consumption of R A. So, that is K1 C A but with a minus sign. Okay, If it would have been minus R A then I would write K1 C A simply. So, these are interchangeable. Now, the rate with respect to the component R is given as dCr dt equals to K1 Ca and at the same time there is consumption K2 Cr. Similarly, for S component the rate is dCs dt equals to K2 Cr. Okay. Now, uh, first we start with concentration Ca0. So, initially the system has Ca equals to Ca0, Cr equals to Cr0 equals to 0 and Cs equals to Cs0 equals to 0. Okay. And uh, of course, the stoichiometry relates the concentrations of the reacting components. So, uh, the overall composition is like Ca0 equals to Ca plus Cr plus Cs. This is valid for the entire system. This is from the stoichiometric understanding. Now, let us uh, proceed with finding the integrated form of the rate equation. So, with respect to our uh, rate equation for component A, the integrated form, let me write it integrated form of R A, okay, that is given as minus ln C A by C A 0 equals to K 1 T. You can also write this in the manner that C A equals to C A 0 e to the power minus K 1 T. Okay. So, this is the expression to relate the concentration of A at any point in the reaction span. Now, how do we track the concentration of R? This is this equation is handy for tracking the concentration of A. Now, let us go to concentration of R. What we will do? We will substitute this expression in the equation for rate of R. So, simply we can write dcr dt equals to k1 ca minus k2 cr this was our main rate equation for r we can write this as dcr dt plus k2 cr equals to k1 instead of ca we will write this term now ca0 e to the power minus k1 t. Okay. 
now this is uh, like a first order linear differential equation i'm writing it in short so you have to find the integrating factor and use that to solve the differential equation so i'm just writing the uh, final solution the final solution will show that CR equals to CA0 into K1 multiplied by e to the power minus K1T by K2 minus K1 plus e to the power minus K2T by K1 minus K2. This is the expression for tracking the concentration of R in the reaction okay now we have already stated that uh, the reaction stoichiometry is held valid okay so based on this understanding and using the uh, concentration tracking equations for A and R components we are going to find the equation for tracking cs or the concentration of s okay so to do that you will have to use ca and cr equations and if you combine them you will find cs is equals to ca0 multiplied by 1 plus k2 by k1 minus k2 e to the power minus k1 t plus k1 by k2 minus k1 e to the power minus k2 t how we have obtained this simply this equation let me call this equation 2 and the equation for c as equation 1 so I am just using these two equations and substituting over here for the rate equation of S component. Okay, that will give me the expression for CS. So now we have found how to track the composition of all these components in the series reaction with respect to time here uh, i am naming this uh, cs equation as equation 3 okay now uh, obviously cs is our final interest point because this is s is the final product that we are looking at okay now let us do some analysis from this expression so if k2 is much much larger than k1 then cs will reduce to the form ca0 into 1 minus e to the power minus k1 t why so because k2 is much much greater than 1 k1 in the same way if k1 is sorry let me just erase this if k1 is much much greater than k2 in that case cs becomes equivalent to ca0 multiplied by 1 minus e to the power minus k2t okay so if k2 is greater then k1 or the first reaction uh, that is involved a to r is the slowest step because the rate if you remember a gives r was having a rate constant k1 and sorry r gives s i wrote a mistakenly r gives s has the 
rate constant k2 so if k2 is greater than k1 that means this reaction the second one is faster and the former reaction is slower so in that case the influence of the rate constant k1 is seen on the final concentration of cs in the same way for the second case let me write this uh, expressions again okay i made the same mistake a gives r and r gives s k1 k2 so if k1 is much much greater than k2 then the first reaction becomes faster and the next one becomes slower so as it is you can see in the second case the influence of k2 term is visible on the concentration of s therefore the slowest step is the greatest influencer for series reactions this is a very important observation that we have mathematically okay now uh, apart from uh, telling which of the steps is the uh, you know most influential in the entire series reaction it can also tell us one more thing that is what is the maximum concentration of the intermediate product r okay so we have the reaction as a gives r gives s so what is the maximum concentration of r and at what point of time do we see that these are also available from the kinetics of the series reaction how do we find that if we differentiate the rate the uh, concentration tracking equation 2 that is for cr if you differentiate cr and then set dcr dt equals to 0 then you can find the time so let me write that for you so to find time at which cr is maximum during the entire reaction what you have to do is differentiate equation 2 let me write equation 2 once more for you cr equals to ca0 multiplied by k1 multiplied by e to the power minus k1t by k2 minus k1 plus e to the power minus k2t divided by k1 minus k2 differentiate this equation and set dcr dt equals to 0 okay and then you will get the time at which cr is maximum so let me label that as t max that is equal to 1 by k log mean what do i mean by log mean rate constant it means let me write the log mean expression for you first k log mean means k2 minus k1 by ln of k2 by k1 okay so if you put that over here 1 by k log mean then you will get ln k2 by k1 whole divided by k2 minus k1 okay this is the time measure when your 
concentration for R component reaches the maximum. Now, what is the maximum concentration of R? What is the exact value of that maximum concentration? We can find that if we combine equation 2 and let me call this equation 4 this T max equation as equation 4 ok. So, I am writing combining equations 2 and 4 you will get that C R max equals to C A 0 multiplied by K 1 by k2 whole to the power k2 by k2 minus k1 ok. So, this is the maximum concentration of R. Now, uh, let us just visualize the concentration time curves for this uh, kind of uh, series reaction. So, let me just draw the plot on the x axis we have time and on the y axis we have concentration of the three components. So, initially C A 0 is present. So, C A 0 will slowly be decomposing ok and we did not have any C R or C S that is C R 0 equals to 0 and C S 0 is also equal to 0. So, let me first draw C R. So, C R rises slowly and then it reaches a peak and then starts falling again. Whereas, for S it keeps rising slowly ok. So, this is for C S, this is for C R and this is for C A. Now, the point at which we get a peak of C R value, if you project that on the y axis then you will get the C R max concentration value and if you project that same point on the time axis then you will get the T max value ok. So, typically uh, we see that A decreases in an exponential manner and R will reach one maximum peak and then fall, but S will continue to be produced slowly and the greatest rate of increase of S production occurs when R is maximum. You see the curve in between this region is very steep ok. In the beginning it is slow and towards the end also it is slow, but in between when you are at that region uh, where the concentration of R is around the peak you will see a very sharp rate of production for the S component. So, here also you can uh, like use the experimental data to visualize the kinetics that is one thing and based on this overall understanding you can extend the same for a, a like long chain of series uh, reactions. Let us say A gives R gives S gives T and so on. Only thing is that the calculation becomes more uh, you know uh, difficult you have to go through a long uh, step of integration and so on, but effectively this is the way it is done the entire uh, calculations are carried out for series reaction that is it thank you.